Hello Dinosaur Park Builders! Today is the day Prehistoric Kingdom is available in early access. I've had it in alpha and beta so I already have over 100 hours in the game and I'm going to give you some much needed construction tips including important hotkeys to help you build the dinosaur park of your dreams. Let's start with the path tool. With segment length set at zero you can make the path any length by pulling the cursor out from the starting point but you can also set it to increase at which the length increases and decreases based on how much you pull out the cursor. For example, if I set it to 12 meters, it extends at 12 meter long increments. Below segment length, you can also set segment width. You can make some truly thick paths in this game. To toggle between straight and curved paths, use C. The fences in Prehistoric Kingdom work the exact same way as the path tool, so all that has been said before now works the exact same with fences, with the exception of being able to set fence width, of course. You can turn on angle snap at the bottom right so the path or fence always comes out at a set angle. If you are using angle snap turned on as the default for your fences and path and you need to place one piece at a free angle, just hold down shift to temporarily get rid of the angle snap. Now let's go to the thing that we've all been excited for, the modular building. Modular building is very time consuming and having the day night cycle on might be a little difficult to work with. You can set it to any time of day by going to the time and weather controls. I personally like setting it to a sunny afternoon when I'm building. If you like building in the dark, use L to use a flashlight. Switch between two types of camera tilt with T. One tilts the camera around the position of the focal point the other tilts the camera around the position of the camera itself. Prehistoric Kingdom comes with an absolute ton of modular pieces separated into different categories. Add pieces to your favorites to make them easier to find, especially if you're working with a certain theme in your park that has you using a lot of the same key pieces over and over. When you select a piece, you see it has a grid around it. For some items, when you place them, the grid disappears and you can then place the next item freely. For construction items, however, like the walls, the grid remains and it dictates where you place the next item. This makes building a wall or any structure really a lot easier because things line up automatically. If you want to be more precise with your placement, you can lower the grid width. You can see that it is made up of a lot more smaller squares if you do that. If you don't want to be stuck in a grid at all and have complete free movement with each piece, then check the single groups box on the bottom right. This makes each item its own group and you're able to place it individually of the previous one of any other given item. You might need this precision for some projects, but be mindful of the down side of not having the items joined together as a group. A group can later be moved, edited and duplicated as a whole at once, which is a very useful feature. So I suggest using single groups only as an exception to the rule. While working in a group, be purposeful about what that group contains. If you just keep building with single groups turned off, as should be your default as I said, you are continuously adding to that one group. At some point, you'll want to exit the group and start a new one. Make sure you have groups that make sense. So a group should be a single building, a single bridge, a single gate, that sort of thing. In my first park, I definitely made the mistake of staying in one group accidentally, and then that group had multiple buildings and decorative pieces all across my massive park. So when I moved one thing, I ended up unknowingly moving something else on the far side of my zoo, and I didn't even realize until later. I was like, wait, what is this doing here? Just make sure that your groups make sense. If you do make a mistake, you can however select an item within a group and split them from the group. To select one item, just click on it. To select multiple items at once, hold down shift and then click on each piece you want selected. The drag tool should also work. It worked for me in alpha, but for some reason it's not working for me right now. That could be a bug or maybe a removed feature. I don't know. Selected items or groups as a whole can be duplicated by using control D. This duplicates whatever was selected into free move, meaning you can place it anywhere. If you use control V, the items are duplicated in advanced move. Then you can use the widgets to move them precisely along any axis. I'll explain the functions of the widget more in a minute, 
minutes, they are, in a word, amazing. And they have a major improvement over Planet Zoo, if you are familiar with that game. But we're saving that for a little later, because there's some more basic stuff that we need to get out of the way first. Now, if you've built a nice fountain or gate or whatever, something that you want to use more often, save the build as a prefab, so it's always available to you. When you have an item selected, you rotate with X and Y, and you can easily raise or lower each item by holding down the shift key and then moving the cursor up or down. That is useful for any item, honestly, and you'll see. But really, a tip from me to you is to especially make good use of it with rocks and foliage. By holding shift, you can make foliage look entirely different. Treetops can become awesome new shrubs. If you turn off the stacking feature, the item stays sunken down to the desired level. If you turn on the stacking feature, it always bounces back up, so you have to keep using the shift to pull it back down. Each item has its own orientation on the map. If you want to place multiple items in the same orientation that differs from the standard, use lock objects rotation under general at the bottom right. You can see that I can just place everything in the same rotation. For a lot of items, you can completely customize their color. Click on the little square color swatch and switch it to anything you'd like. The item will retain its texture, which is really, really neat. It's an absolutely amazing feature. You can turn a rock into a big hunk of gold. The texture of construction pieces can be changed in the bottom right as well. Use the stack surface option to have an item stick to a surface. This can be the ground, naturally, or the side of a wall. Use a line to surface to have the bottom of the item stick to whatever it was as if it were the ground, in the sense that it changes its orientation from, for example, pointing straight up to pointing at a 90 degree angle if you placed on a wall. This is very, very handy for signs to get them upright. Now it's time to look at that widget. That's what I call it at least. Maybe it's called something differently officially, but a widget it is in my mind. By the way, if you're still here and you're appreciating the help, please help me out by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see some cool prehistoric kingdom builds from me, then subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a thing. The widget gives you advanced control over anything, except, you know, your life. <laughs> that's out of control. Maybe that's just me. To access it for any given item, use V. You can also use the buttons at the top right. The widget has four key functions. Move, rotate, free movement, and scaling. Free movement is the easiest. It just detaches the item from its placement and allows you to replace it wherever you want. Opposite of that is the movement edit. This allows you to move the item along three-dimensional axis using the arrows. If you hold the cursor between two arrows, you can move in two different directions at once. Hitting the check mark will save the edits you made, and that's very important. Don't accidentally right-click out of there, because then all of the changes you made will be lost. The movement edit is especially great if you want to create a neat row of items. With the item selected, hit Control v for advanced duplication. You can place as many duplicates as as you want in a perfectly straight line. Next is the rotate function, which allows you to angle an item in any which way. If you want one thing perfectly perpendicular to another, make use of the angle snap option by going to the settings at the bottom right and selecting it. You can set it to 90 degrees or to less. If you want to make a circle with an item, I will show you. First off, put two of the same item across from one another. Select them both and use Control V for advanced duplicate to go all the way around. Round. For example, to perfectly line a round flower bed with bamboo. The next main function of the widget and the most amazing feature, which sets it apart from Planet Zoo, is the scaling edit. This allows you to extend or just enlarge any of the modular items. This helps a ton to make pieces fit for your builds and to get the most use out of a single item. Pulling on any of the three bars will extend the item in that given direction. Pulling on the cube at the center enlarges the item overall as a whole, keeping its original proportions. Each item has a max amount you can rescale it, but only in a single try. You can deselect it, then rescale again and extend its size further and further. Of course, 
There is a reason to the original limits, you will lose detail. But if you want to make a rock just a little bit larger, no, you can go back in and rescale further. When rescaling an item, this is where the center control of the widget might be most useful. This is what I mostly use it for during my massive park build. Initially, it probably won't be clear what this little global icon does, but it is very important. The button allows you to switch between global and local space. Global space means you edit the item or group on the global axis, which always has the same orientation. If you set it to local space, the axis are reset to the orientation of the singular item you've selected. If you want to extend an angled item, for example, you need to switch to the local space so the tool follows the orientation of the item and you can simply extend it that way. My final tip and handy feature of the scaling edit is that you can make a mirror image of any given item. Go to the scaling edit and drag the bar all the way over the center white cube and then extend it on the other side. This is very handy for signs and statues to pair them symmetrically. And the most important hotkey of all works in Prehistoric Kingdom, and that is Control Z to undo whatever mistake you've made. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.